It's a mailbag. It's a mailbag. It's a mailbag. A spaghetti and meatballs. I cook it a spaghetti and meatballs. I couple, like it a sauce. We got a couple mailbags here, you guys. I need you to read them because I'm having an eyesight problem. What if you have to wear a really cool eye patch? I've been considering getting an eye patch until this heals. If something had to happen to your eyeball to make it heal, what do you think it's going to heal on its own? It's already healing on its own. Like it's gotten okay. better over it's, the last few days. Yeah, yeah. Maybe wear an eye patch. That'd be cool. I mean, I wanted to, but Lauren said no. You could get a, a like an emo hair wig and then just put it over one eye. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm really a proud cool. bald man. I think you look really cool. Okay, we got a couple of mailbags and I will read them because my eyes, though not perfect, are better. You know, I actually have a, a dent in one of my uh, corneas. Yeah, like someone did that. That's fucked up. I know. Why do they do that? Why you do that? Why do you do that? Uh, okay, this is from Daniel Hickey. Hello, Hi, Daniel. Hello, Matt and Emily. I feel awful for not writing. The cats are disappointed in me. I've been watching and storing up questions. You don't have to answer all of these, but here goes. Love the Criterion Closet series and assume you are fans also. Which filmmaker choices and closet hang sessions have been your favorite? Well, you should never assume. I have actually never watched a Criterion Closet video. <laughs> I've watched some. I'll skim through them when they come up on like Instagram and stuff. I like Michael Shannon's because he calls himself a lucky boy for being in the closet. I like Willem Dafoe's because he got really stoked to see him self on the cover of Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> and I'm just, Jesus. And he's like, oh, who's this guy? It was really cute. I like Jason Schwartzman. That was kind of recent. I liked his picks. There's not any that are jumping out at me. But I, I always kind of scan through them when I see him. And yeah. Matt's never watched I've never one. watched one. I assume Bill Hader did one. Did he do one? Yeah, he's done like a couple. Then I probably love that one. Kevin, have you watched any Criterion Closet? What? Clips? No, no, just pretend I'm not here. Uh, I haven't watched all of them, but I can't think of any that are good off the top of my head. Okay, no, cool. No, they're all good. I love it. I love, I want to be one of those famous people who gets to go get free shit. I know, just fill up the toe. You rich, famous person, and you get to go. I get free shit all the time. Yeah, and get free shit, do you? You get to Well, not from them, but I mean, I do get free shit. Oh, yeah, I mean, but, you know, good free shit, like from Criterion. I got a, I got a nice, I got a nice uh, May-December book. You got that water bottle you got sometimes that use? Got that water bottle. You water bottle? I got, uh... I got I got uh, the Maestro on soundtrack on vinyl. This new segment is Matt listing the swag he's got. I got a lot of swag this year. I got some good swag. Nice. You mean last year? Next time I'll, sh I'll show you the Knives Out 2 t-shirt I got. It's pretty sick. Can't wait. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. That was that question kind of. Uh, which short film compilations at Scarecrow would you recommend? I'd recommend one that's in the... It's currently in the Guy Madden section called Isolation in the 80s. And it has a Guy Madden short, which is very good. But it also has a John Pays short, Springtime in Greenland, is on there, as well as some other crazy ass 80s shorts. So I recommend cool. that. You should just like have my mouth moving while Rich said <laughs> those things, because I agree with him completely. So I, I, Never used to be into shorts, and in the past few years I have been because I've been on on programming teams for shorts for festivals, so I've kind of just like gotten into them. But I don't have any like collections that I can think of yeah. right now. But we do have a big short section. Whenever yeah. they do the uh, the like now we're the award for the Oscar nominated shorts, that's when I like go to the bathroom and get a snack. I just don't care. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, um, I'm a bad I'm a bad person. Um, the shorts on the Sarah Jacobson <laughs> release, the oh, Blu-ray. Yeah. There's a really good short of her well there's the i was a teenage serial killer and then there's the short of her going bra shopping with her mom that's literally just her recording her and her mom in like a department store trying on bras and talking about it it's the best let's see next question i'm competing in a noir film competition in march feel everyone will go classic and might go in the other direction any hidden gem modern noirs or noir adjacent you might recommend they need to be modern well here i don't know he's competing in a noir film competition what does that really mean? I don't know what that means. means. Like coming up with, like recommending the best ones? I don't Making a film noir? Feel everyone will go classic and I might go the other direction. Or like everybody brings one in and everybody watches it and they decide which, who brought the best movie in. 
All of these sound fun. Yeah, I don't know. I'm down for all of them. Any hidden gem modern noirs or noir adjacent you might recommend? Oh, I didn't read the modern part. Oh my gosh. That's more, I feel like you like a lot of like neo noir stuff. Time. Yeah, you know, I mean, I would definitely recommend Blonde Death if you want to watch a neo noir. <laughs> Blonde Death rules. <laughs> I don't um, know if you can categorize it as a neo noir, but I certainly will. The movie Always Shine is mm. great. Yeah. I knew where they were talking. Cold Weather, that's one you like. Ooh, Cold Weather cold is weather terrific. Is yeah. Yeah. And and that same director who did Cold Weather, Aaron Katz, he made a movie called Gemini, which is terrific. Gemini is really good. Uh, I highly recommend Red Rock West. It's modern-ish. It's yes, fine. It's yes. Fine. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Wow. Sun Don't Shine, which... Ooh, that movie is awesome. She also did something called She Dies Tomorrow that I didn't like as much, but Sun Don't Shine is great. And Sun Don't, Sun Don't, Sun Don't Shine is kind of hard to see. Is I don't it? even know if we have it. Is it not on physical release? I don't believe that it is. Well... Sorry. Sorry about that. Terrific everybody. film, though. Amy Smith. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Walter Hill had made a really good movie in the 90s called, or 90s or late 80s called Johnny Handsome. Oh, yeah. That's terrific. Me? One False Move may be the greatest American neo noir of the last 30 years. Yep. This one's for Matt. When does Sean Baker get a director's section? This one's for Matt. <laughs> uh, uh, when I'm dead. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I think, honestly, the movie, I think the movies are fine. I don't think he deserves a section, at least not yet. Honestly, it, it takes a while for us to establish new sections, and it's not like it's not like weekly people go through and are like, well, should we give them a section this week? It's kind of just... Personally, I object to the phrasing that implies that he automatically deserves a section. Which guy is this again? Sean Baker, He's... Tangerine, Florida oh, yeah. Project, like Florida Red Project. Rocket. They're good movies. They're fine. But what I mean, Don't, they need at least like five. That's it. We used to have a limit of three. It should Was be it a four? Limit. It should be at least four. It was four. But, we don't need a section with two things. But, but frankly, I don't, think that, uh, I don't think that his oeuvre has achieved the level that would necessitate a director's section. I think maybe there's and other people that need it first. And I think that to go, like, first. when is this person going to, like... Why don't I go, when is Peter Strickland going to get his director section? Why don't probably you never. Why don't you put one in there? Well, I mean, I would like to have him have one, but he probably won't get one. I think you should get let's one. Not, let's not insist on the move here. All right. The last one is, am I too late yet again to invite you and all amazing Scarecrow people to another episode of Seattle Horror Filmmakers Drink and Hang at Two Fingers Social Saturday the 17th, which is this Saturday? I definitely will not be there because I'm moving this weekend. I... I'm meeting with a friend in West Seattle, so I will be around, and we'll just maybe I'll end up there. Mosey on over there. Who knows? You rock. Send my regards. Yeah, get, we will eventually come. I swear. You rock. Get so many great film recs from you. Thanks as always, Dan. Thanks, You're Dan. welcome, Dan. I'm sorry, I'm such a curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one is from Josh Ickes. I just signed up for Scarecrow's Rent by Mail, and I'm looking for some guidance. Forgive me if this has been asked before. Do you have a Mount Rushmore of DVD Blu-ray extras? Maybe a commentary that's more than the director narrating the movie. Perhaps a making of doc that's actually insightful and not some fluff piece full of canned anecdotes and back slapping. Well, A, you should go back because our buddy Ben has done a couple of Ben specials where he talks about some really fun DVD extras. Not quite sure if it's exactly what you're looking for because they're a little strange, but they're pretty good. As I've said before, I'm not and haven't ever been a big extras person on DVDs or Blu-rays, which I always say I'm trying to fix, but then I just end up wanting to watch like another different movie. <laughs> and then I read a lot about movies. I just don't watch the extras that much. So you should see the, listen to the commentary track of Blood Simple on the DVD. Okay. Okay, Rich has got this one. Uh, Rich is, this is Rich's mailbag. P.D. Reedstraw. Oh, that is a classic. Rich is this is for all the DVD fans. <laughs> Rewind that. Simultaneously the worst and best commentary track ever. The best part of P.D. Wichron is when he goes, uh, watch as I put my foot up this motherfucker's ass. So I am kind of with you. Like, I don't watch a lot of extras, but I used to watch a lot of them. The reason I stopped is because I think that most physical media extras have really deteriorated in quality yeah. over the years. They're just not that substantive anymore. You occasionally get a good commentary. Especially with like a lot of the boutique labels, they have a lot of good stuff. My favorite commentaries are some of the weirder ones. One of my favorite ones is from In the Mouth of Madness, the John Carpenter movie, which is him and the director of photography. And I think it's Gary Kibbe, but I'm not positive about that. But it's just, the commentary is just like, 
Two guys who could not be more bored doing the commentary for the movie that they made. So, Gary, how did you how did you like this scene? A uh, regular way. <laughs> I mean, it's like real. It's real flat. And which funny is because it's funny because that movie is one of Carpenter's best movies. Yeah. I love that. Oh, movie. it's it's a really good one. Um, there's also one with the screenwriters on the 1998 movie version of Lost in Space. One of the worst movies of its era. One of the worst movies maybe ever made. Who's in that one? Is that like Tim it's Allen? It's like William Hurt. No, it's Galaxy Quest. Oh. William Hurt, like Lacey Chabert is in it. Matt LeBlanc. Heather Graham. Uh, Mimi Rogers is the mom. Nice. Gary Oldman plays Dr. Smith. It's fucking terrible. Oh, and uh, But the screenwriters are on the commentary track and they're basically like, yeah, we fucked this up. We it's bad. Sorry. <laughs> so I think I think that one's a good one. Also, if you wanna if you wanna read a really fucking hundred percent chef's kiss, all go big nuts, no quit booklet essay, the new vinegar syndrome 4K of Southern Comfort has an essay Ooh. written by me. Wait, really? Really? Are you being serious? Yes. I didn't know you did that. Why don't you tell your friends what you do? I just did. That's really great, Matt. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and I will read it because I like that movie. Um, it's in a booklet but doesn't list. There's three other. There's three essays in the booklet. One of them is mine. It doesn't tell you which one. So They don't give you a byline on there? I didn't get a byline or a title, so you can guess. Well, everyone out there, it's Matt. It was Matt. Yeah. Obviously, the iconic drunk Ben Affleck doing Armageddon is great. Oh, man. You know you were supposed to be in that Titanic before. Uh, <laughs> you were supposed to be in this before Titanic come out. Man, he, he's so funny on that one. Um, and then a dog kind of documentary that me and Kevin watched, Los Reyes, had a really good extra where they talked about how they found these dogs and how they just kind of were setting out to do a story about these skaters and then decided to focus on these two stray dogs that hung out at the skate park. Los Reyes, watch that movie if you haven't, it's amazing. Yeah, so my go-to for this sort of thing has been Soderbergh, both with his own movies and when he guests on other commentaries like Point Blank. Hopefully that means you've watched the, or you've heard the commentary on the Limey where he argues with the screenwriter about, the screenwriter's mad at how he fucked up his script. Oh no. It's a really good commentary and a great movie. Uh, big fan of all that you guys do. Thanks for the recommendations over the years and looking forward to more. R.I.P. Kevin pouring one out for a real one. He's right here. <laughs> He's right here. Look, there he is. Ah, back from the dead. <laughs> Much love, Josh Akis. Thanks, Josh. If you want to send us some mailbags, you can let us know what you've been watching, ask for recommendations, give us recommendations, uh, send us pictures of your animals, send us pictures of your pictures or videos of your home physical media collections. We love those, and I would love to see more of those. Viva at scarecrow.com, or you can write us in snail mail at Viva Physical Media, 5030 Roosevelt Way. Northeast, Seattle, Washington, 98105. Or you can step into the store and just drop it off to someone at the counter. Yeah. They'll find us. Probably. Eventually, yeah. one day. All right. That's a mailbag. Mail